Hi, I'm John Mallows. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this 4th of July. It's Tuesday, and yes, our country, I'll tell you how old it is in just a few moments, but we're going to have a special program about veterans here and a special project that's ongoing, could break ground as early as next year. 436, Me TV, option 11. Let's wave the American flag today, the 4th of July. It's Independence Day, my friends, back in just a moment. Back here on the program. So glad to have you on the show today. 436 Me TV Option 11. It is Connect with Me on Me TV Fresno. And I'll tell you what, you'll see these flags flying around everywhere today. It's the American flag. You'll see them on homes, around cemeteries. They're flying on pickup trucks around the nation, I can guarantee you, including here in the city of uh, Fresno and Clovis. And so uh, happy Independence Day and stay safe and sound uh, tonight if you go watch the fireworks out at Chichancy or anywhere uh, in the area. There are fireworks uh, going on all over the Central Valley uh, today, so just stay safe. Quick programming note for tomorrow. Um, Chris Cummings, he is the, what do you want to call Chris Cummings? He's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of this program's. I consider him a dear friend, and I guess you could call him coming this close to becoming the former owner of the Fresno Grizzlies. He'll talk about the potential sale. Then on Thursday, we'll have a surgeon here in on the program to talk about bariatric surgery. It's to try to lose and shed some of that uh, weight uh, for some people. We'll talk about how successful that's been uh, over at the uh, Fresno Heart and Surgical Center. And then on Friday, we have got, we'll wave the American flag one more time, we got Congressman Jim Costa coming in. He'll talk about that all-important health care bill. They're trying to push through the Senate now, They're trying to repeal and re uh, replace Obamacare. I know he's a congressman. He's not part of the Senate, but we're still going to talk about it because, remember, Congress repealed and replaced Obamacare with the American Health Care Act, and that wasn't all that long ago. And uh, we have a call already. I haven't even gotten through my monologue yet. I haven't even waved the flag yet. You know what? This is highly unusual, but I'm going to take the call just for the sake of taking the call because I want to see what this is all about. Hello, caller. You're on the air. I uh, haven't even gotten through my monologue yet. What's up? Well, I've got a question. <laughs> and the question is simply, what... Why does the American public must pay for the care and treatment of our military people? And I'm talking on, not about the presidents or anything else. I'm just talking right. about the G. You know what I'm going to do? The, call her. Call her. That's a good question for our guest. Would you mind hanging on through my monologue, and then I'll introduce the guest, go to commercial break, and come back, and you can ask him that question. How's that? You want to hang on? I will. You hang on. Don't say a word until I get through my monologue, and I will get through this. So on Friday, Congressman Jim Costa, we have a veteran, uh, two veterans here in the House uh, today to talk uh, about the health care bill and about uh, veterans uh, per se. I'm glad that we got some interest already uh, during the course of uh, this program. I want to also mention we're selling those antennas over here at Ventura TV today, the outdoor digital antennas. We're open until 4 o'clock. We've got all kinds of Fourth of July specials. Come in and see Dennis, Hector, Rafi is over here till 4 o'clock in the afternoon at Ventura TV. You're watching us live on Comcast Channel 375 as usual. It is Comcast Cable, 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning, a call-in program. As usual, 43.6, 13.1 over the air broadcast with one of those digital antennas. Remember, we're open until 4 here at Ventura TV. Later on in the day, as you're prepping for the fireworks and the barbecues and all the rest, you can watch the replay at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 13.6 YouTube, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6 Biz TV. The rest is going to be on YouTube. Our country today, 241 years old. Can you believe that? The 4th of July, better known as the day of fireworks, barbecues, family get-togethers, birthdays, picnics, 
family reunions, whatever the case may be, but it's Independence Day, the day, same day that we said bye-bye to the British Empire and hello, Independence. Yes, it's a day that we celebrate our freedoms, but really, it's a day that we should celebrate every day. Thank goodness for the veterans who keep us safe and free each and every day. I want to roll the videotape, my friends, to show you what I'm talking about because I am talking about our U.S. veterans. In this video you're looking at, some of the World War II veterans returning home to Fresno after one of those fabulous trips to Washington, D.C. Central Valley Honor Flight has made 12 trips to the nation's capital, taking both World War II vets and those who fought in the Korean War. It gives those veterans a chance to see their memorials with their very own eyes, up close and personal, but they don't travel alone. They have guardians who accompany them. It's a way to honor their sacrifice and service to their country, putting their lives on the line. And it's amazing how the Central Valley has responded since the very first honor flight back in 2013. It's Al Perry and Paul Leffler now in charge. $2.6 million raised in that amount of time. No cost to the veterans, though. 100% of the money raised goes to funding those flights. And trip number 13 is coming up in October. Many of the veterans you see here had never been to the nation's capital, never. And for them, it was the chance of a lifetime as they return home to a hero's welcome here in Fresno, much to the surprise of many, as you see. Here in Fresno, there was a group looking to further honor those who served, whether it be World War II, whether it be Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. The group wants to build a veterans educational center just off of Highway 180. But it's early on, in the beginning stages of a project that could take years. They already have some money in the bank, but not nearly enough. That's why they are looking for sponsors. We'll tell you about some big name corporations that are lined up, ready to help, and when they plan to possibly break ground. Live in our studio now is Richard Graham. He is a 58-year-old Vietnam-era vet. That means he never saw combat in Vietnam, but we will talk to him about his service to his country here on the 4th of July and your service and our caller is waiting. I'm going to take a commercial break, let the caller come back and then he'll ask the uh, first question to our guest Richard Graham. Today is the 4th of July, 241 years old for our country. What does this flag here, what does it stand, what does it mean for you? Can you recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, can you sing the Star Spangled Banner? I've been overseas a couple of times, and I'll tell you what, when I saw the American flag being waved high above the ground in some foreign countries that I was in, I stood very proud to say that I was an American. 436 Me TV, option 11. And also, we might even touch on the topic, what about some sports athletes like Colin Kaepernick and others that do not salute the flag during the national anthem? What about people uh, that protest, that burn the flag, the American flag? Does that outrage you? We'll talk about all those topics today back here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno in just a moment. Take a look at this. Let's play. This is too hip for y'all, slow down. Let's play. Watch all your favorite classic game shows on Buzzer TV, KBBC Digital Channel 13.7. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Got to tell you, my friends, it's very emotional for a lot of veterans who uh, take that honor flight trip and then they come back home to a hero's welcome when you have hundreds of people at the airport greeting them. It really is quite an emotional sight. And a lot of thanks goes out to uh, Al Perry, the guy who was in charge of this honor flight for so many years. I believe Paul Leffler, our good friend here, too, uh, is taking over for Paul or taking over for Al in that role. 
I think that both will be on this program in August uh, sometime. Uh, it'll be Al Perry and Paul Leffler. But it's emotional to go overseas, too. And many of you have been overseas. A lot of people have been overseas. It's nothing new. I mean, uh, we go overseas all the time, don't we? But anyway, during my course of uh, the last 15 years when I've been overseas, it's very emotional to see the American flag. Uh, when you see it flying, in, um, you know, uh, in a foreign country like Brazil or Greece or Germany uh, or some of these other countries, uh, it really does make you feel uh, like a proud American. All right, uh, Richard Graham is here. Welcome to the program. Happy Fourth of July, Richard. Happy Fourth of July to you. Thank you very much. We got a call waiting, and yes, he's been sir. waiting very patiently, and he wants to direct the question okay. towards you, my friend. All right. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Thank you. This is a question concerning the Department of Defense and is also concerning the VA administration mm -hmm. and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Right. Because of these people and make the decisions on how to treat our veterans. They and we can I remember the time where one of the veterans was charged three hundred and fifty dollars for his weapon. Right. And they ask him about it where is it? And he says it's in my hand uh, attached to my arm. That I left in over there in Iraq. So now, why are we paying the general public, as you, Project Wounded Warrior, and the DAV, and all the other stuff? We are paying, helping them. When uh, we our taxes should automatically go right straight to any veteran that needs to help, and they should be able to have a make a decent living off of it and be have what they need in medical care, psychiatric care, whatever care they need. Our government is letting them down. Now, am I against the vets? No. I was drafted, but I did not serve in 1964 All because right. of, uh, I have a disability. Okay. Mm -hmm. You were ready and to I get got, to the Air Force, but I was still found out that I have only one eye, and they don't take one-eyed people. But anyway, why are we not forcing these people to pay their fair share for the veterans? Why do we have to do it? Our taxes should already be doing it. Uh, the, let me respond to your question. Yeah, go ahead. Stay there. Majority of... Uh, the majority of the projects that's out there is a lot about raising funds. Some people are sincere about trying to help, and some people aren't sincere. They're creating a program for themselves, basically. Uh, the ones that are sincere dedicate themselves to the project, dedicate themselves to going out there and doing hands-on, not sitting back and letting someone else do it. They want to be right there on the scene taking care of business personally. Yes. And in some, a lot of situations uh, such as people trying to put these projects together and programs together, uh, most of them is like, uh, is like us. They're veterans. They served. Uh, for the ones that didn't serve, their family members, uh, they was there. They seen their brothers and sisters lose their lives. They, they was there uh, in all of the uh, stages of watching them go through basic training, graduating, and going on to other uh, duties. Uh, and they're dedicated to helping family folks. So the situation here is that most of them, that they don't use the taxes properly like they need to. And when you get to taxes and other different fundings for the veterans, it's a politician's job. He's voted in office to do his job to look out for his people. And when something happens to him and he changes that attitude of what he's in that office for, that's what makes the difference. Yeah. It's up to him as an individual to look out for his people. And uh, so that's where the problem really lies. It don't lie with the individuals themselves, a lot of them. Uh, so it's the government. It's the government, yeah. And who runs the government? Well, the people, <laughs> people are supposed to run the government. Well, it's but, the politicians who run the government, right, of course. Right, and then we elect of... those politicians, yes, of course. Yes, we sir. always have, but we don't have a better system. So, hey, yes. caller, let me ask you a question before you go. Oh, and that is, you said you couldn't serve because of your disability. Uh, had you been able to serve, would you have gone to Vietnam? 
I was supposed to, on my, um, how am I going to phrase this? It does not sound like some kind of creep. Um, what happened was I knew that when I was in college that I was going to flunk out. And I had to stay and carry my 2.0 that I needed to continue. So okay. I decided, well, I know where I'm going. They're going to get me to send me to Vietnam. And I turned right around and said, nope. And I joined the Air Force. And yeah. in the Air Force, I was supposed to be get, trained as an accountant. Okay. But yeah. it didn't work out because at the last station, the eye exam, they found out that I only had one eye. Oh. Then okay. I then I went home from the, I was in, I was living in L.A. County, so I went home from the Broadway uh, induction center, and then I turned right around and when I get home, my mother come out and I had my draft notice, okay. all on the same day, and yeah. it said greetings from your neighbors and your friends and on the board of uh, selective service and all that nonsense, right. and so yeah. That's what happened. They went, I went from 1A to 1Y and the 4F. Yeah. The gentleman sitting next to you will know the, what the terms I was using yes. about 4F. But it does not, nothing can be said about the people that are running our country and then they are supposed to help these all the way straight through where the people have lost legs, arms, and all this other stuff. It's awful. But instead, when they were in Rotten Minor in Germany, in the hospital trying to live, they were sent bills like one three hundred fifty dollars for the guy's weapon. I alluded to earlier. Another one was they were charging them sixty dollars a day for care they're supposed to get for free, and we had a big, big, big think about that, and we were able to change a little bit of it. But yeah. the veterans are not getting. What they deserve. Well, That's true. You, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. But hey, caller, just another quick question, a quick, quick comment. I want to get other calls in here, but I, I've heard this term, and not to belittle anybody, but fear uh, certainly is a great motivator for anybody, right? Yes, yes, it is. Fear. Yes, it so, is. so you know, I came. Cool. You might want to turn that down. I'm hearing some feedback there. Uh, um, yeah, fear is the greatest um, um, motivator for some people, but it can also work in the other direction. Yes, it can. And I had the greatest fear of having to possibly go to Vietnam, and I missed right. it just by a, by a whisker right. because the voluntary army came in, yes. voluntary draft right. back right. in the early 70s when Richard right. Nixon was still in there. He brought in the voluntary draft. Right. But had that not happened, let's see, the Vietnam War ended in 19, the official battle ended in, I guess, late 1973, but then the fall right. of Saigon really ended Sorry, for 1975. good. 1975. That would have been 75, the fall of Saigon. So had I gone, had I had to go, um, I don't know what I'd have done with the fear factor, and I don't know how you handled it. I know you didn't see combat, but you came close, right? Yeah, well, the fear factor plays into there. <clears throat> Excuse me. It make you recognize what you're fixing to face. One and one of the things about fear is that if you know where you're going, and what you're going into, and what you have to deal with, you're better prepared. Then the fear don't it don't never go away. It stays with you, but you're mainly prepared for whatever you run into, and that's what the fear factor does. And now on the other side of the coin of that is that if your buddies get shot, uh, something happened to your team. You're there to protect them. Yeah. See, World War II was so much different. Uh, it was the largest war in our history. Right. There were over 100 countries involved. Millions died. Right. Uh, 1939 to yes, 1945. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a necessary evil because kids were just thrown out there. Yes. In, in, the, in the late 30s, early 40s, right. at the age of 18, 19 years old. So they didn't have time to be scared. That's right. They were thrown on the front lines, go defend our country because we're in trouble here. That's right. Um, so sometimes you don't have to. So maybe the best uh, option would be if you don't have time to think, maybe that's the best option. Uh, Permanently that is. But also, again, a fear factor is that are you prepared to go in? Can you prepare yourself for what's about to happen? And that's one of the most important parts. Because if you can get to a point and we've had a lot of uh, troops come to us that uh, they was afraid of shooting. 
okay, when you go into a combat zone, you have to shoot to protect yourself. But if you're afraid to, to pull right. the trigger, then that fear factor is you got to get past that. Yeah. But, All right. We got to go to break here. Uh, caller, are you still there? Hang on. Is the caller? caller? Yeah, he is. He is there. Hey, listen, I just want to um, uh, put him back on, Kerry, real quick here because he's still there. Um, I just want to say thank you and happy 4th of July thank to you, you sir. sir. Thank you for calling. Got to go to a commercial break, though. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, thank you. All right, now we have an open phone line. That caller was on hold for a long time. Wow, 436, me TV, option 11. If you're a veteran out there watching, if you've seen combat, if you're a World War II vet, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, the Gulf War, call in. 436, me TV, option 11. Happy 4th of July. Back in a moment. The Justice Network is here. If you haven't tuned in, you're missing a great lineup of gripping stories of real crime, plus an unprecedented effort by viewers like you to play an active role in making your community safer. You can help support law enforcement by providing information that may lead to the apprehension of dangerous criminals or find a missing child. Great shows and your chance to fight crime, only on the Justice Network. Not sure what you're watching? Want to see what's coming up next? Or just want to browse what's on without the hassle of flipping channels? Your wish has come true. Now you can view schedules for all the digital TV channels available in the Central Valley. Get local weather updates and forecasts. And listen to nationally syndicated Biz Talk Radio all on KDHF 4.1. Rescan your TV now, then tune in to digital channel 4.1 to start enjoying the all-new TV guide. Back here on the program with Richard Graham and just a quick story about how Richard and I met. He just came in one day in the, in the story of Ventura TV, by the way, up until 4 o'clock today, a 4th of July special. I uh, came in one time and he was talking about this project uh, to me and he wanted to come on the program. So we uh, quickly hit it off and I said, yeah, sure, come on. And the 4th of July is the perfect time to talk about this. Now, Richard, you're planning, and I was a little confused about this. I thought it had something to do with the right, Clovis right. Veterans uh, Memorial Auditorium. It does not. No. You are part of a group yes. that wants to build, now listen to this, yes. folks. They want to build a Veterans Educational Center near the SPCA, yes. near Highway, Highway 180. They've already got about $5,000 in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost a lot more money than that, so they're right. looking for corporate help. Right. They've got three major corporations, possibly, mm -hmm. and I say possibly because you never know what these corps are going to do. Uh, to come on board, uh, we'll put this call on. Let me see who this is. Uh, hang on, caller. I'll get to you in a moment. So, so this is going to be a veterans educational center for all veterans, right, no matter what right. wars they fought in. That's right. What? Why call it an educational center? How will it be educational to not only the veterans but other people who did not serve and to the general public? We want to bridge the gap. One of the main questions I get asked quite a bit is, uh, a lot of folks come back from the war. And the children don't understand what the parents have went through, what their fathers have went through in the war. A lot of them don't understand that even a lot of parents don't even talk about it after coming in from the war. And uh, I've seen children who don't even know their parents was even in the service. So the bridge of the gap is to explain to the children and, and the wives and family members why they don't want to talk about certain issues. Some of the things that you've seen over there, uh, that veterans have seen over there in the war, it's tragic. Uh, not only is it tragic, but it's, it's, crop, it's, crop, uh, it's, it's uh, horrendous about what they've seen over there. And the thing about this is that when you, and I, I'll just touch on it just a little what bit. Kind of, what kind of, let's take the call here real quick, and we'll get back to that in a moment here. Caller, you've been patient. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Richard Graham is here. He is with an organization called Veterans Network. It's called VetNet, an organization that's going to try to build a Veterans Educational Center out there near the SPCA, Highway 180. Uh, they could break ground as early as next year. Happy Fourth of July to you, caller. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, my question is to your guest. Okay, why isn't the government taking care of of the veterans when they come back. Uh, I see commercials where uh, they're asking the public for donations to rehabilitate these veterans. 
And why isn't the American government, okay, that sent them over there to fight, uh, why aren't they taking care of these veterans that have uh, been injured uh, and uh, been hurt in the service? That's well, my I think question. That, that was the, the first caller that called in asked the same question. Why isn't the government taking care of our veterans? Um, I thought they were. Are they not? Well, you, you have. No. They're doing Thank you, quite a bit. Thank you. To help out, and uh, they're doing quite a bit to help out and, and change some things at the VA hospital. They're doing quite a bit to help out in different programs. But what you have is a number of, of politicians who are not on the same line. And when we talk about that, we talk about the Democrats and Republicans. Uh, everybody's got their idea of what they want to do or how they want to do or what program they want to instill. But then it still go back to them as to the part of they're not on the same line. You can't get them to come together and say, this is a program that we choose to work on, we choose to invest in. Let's move the money from point A to point B to be in this program. That's one of the problems. And then uh, you have the people who are in charge. One of the great a uh, gentleman that worked at the veteran home, helped build a veteran home, Mr. Charlie Waters, who's now passed on. He, he was telling me something way before he passed. He said, if you could get them all on the same line, and that means get them all in the same room and talk to them, and they all could come into agreement on one plan, it would really work. But it's never going to happen like that. You get some on the same plan, some on a different plan, and then they go out and do something totally different even after that. So that's one of the problems that, that we have. Politics gets in the way. And when politics is in the way, you don't ever have people who's working sincerely to get the job done that's, like they're supposed to. That's the, that's the short answer. But I want to get back to this um, educational center. Yes, sir. What will be inside the center? When people walk inside this center, how do you want people to look at the center, what do you want them to learn, what do you want them to see? We want them to see, first of all, what we want to... Well, you have artifacts. Well, we, we're going to have the artifacts war. there from the war. We're going to have... Uh, uh, we're going to have also handwritten letters that come from a lot of family folks going to veterans that's overseas. We'll have some of those there. We'll have pictures there uh, from the Unsung Heroes, uh, Mr. Ron Vance in the Unsung Heroes Department. He's written a lot of great stories and a lot of, got a lot of great pictures of people who served. And, and family members didn't even know they served. And uh, some, of the place, some of the places they was at and some of the things they'd done in the war, we'll have that there. We'll have a uh, dress to impress uh of a place there that will help veterans. Uh, they donate suits and stuff for veterans to go out and get jobs. We have a computer center that's going to be there, the top of the line computer center for people who's looking for jobs. And we also have assistance there from City College uh, in Fresno uh, State to assist people to have to work on computers. I mean, and other, they're going in and to get the information that you need from the computers. Okay, so, 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 I mean, Anybody can go online now and look and learn about just about anything in the world now right, that has right. ever happened in the, right. uh, during the course of history. Uh, they can learn about World War II. They can learn about the Gulf War, Iraq War, Vietnam. What's going to be different about the center that will give people the opportunity to learn more than just what's on the Internet? Because, you know, the Internet makes it so simple now. I was talking to a sportscaster <laughs> friend of mine not too long ago. And he said back in the old days, you had to do everything hard copy. Right. You know, you had to call the PR office right. to get stats on players and this and that. He said, now, I don't have to call anybody. It's all on the Internet. But, so, so what's going to be different about this educational center that a kid can't look up on the Internet? We have, we give the personal touch. The personal touch is this. When you look up on the Internet, that is something that someone has written. And you are not really sure if it's what actually happened or not. You can surmise that the person that wrote it may be the true story, but to get the background of the story would be like looking at the Indian War and we talk about what really happened when Custard was in the war and what really happened between the Indians. So well, you'll have that story yes. at that educational yes. center. You will have that That's story the, yes. firsthand. Firsthand. And is it different for people to look at an actual combat helmet or a yes. rifle that was used maybe during World War yes. I yes. Uh, that maybe tells the story in a different way? Or the yes. Civil War, Civil even. War. It, it the Civil, Civil War. War. Yeah. Um, uh, well, we have artifacts from the Civil War. 
We have artifacts from the Civil War. Uh, we did, uh, I did personally, the Civil War reenactment out at Kearney Park a few years ago. And uh, it went really well. I learned a lot from that. Uh, some relatives of mine is involved with that. They How with so? The, uh, the uh, 10th, is the 10th Cavalry out of uh, Los Angeles area. Okay. And uh, they, they're involved with that. And uh, so I learned right. a lot from, oh, got a couple, we have yeah, a call. Yeah, let's take, that, let's take that call here real quick. Caller, thank you for, whoops. Caller, go ahead. Thank you for calling. Happy 4th of July and uh, your question, please. I, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to make a statement. You know, there are a lot of us that aren't on the Internet, so we can't look up these things on the Internet. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's a good point, too. And so um, uh, just, just to wrap up here before I go to break, so this is called a Veterans Educational Center right. that you want to build off of Highway 180 near the yeah. SPCA. What is the Veterans Network, the VetNet? What organization we is that? We network with every organization, veteran network organization across the nation and the world. Okay. Say, for instance, you come in here from Puerto Rico, for instance. So you fly in from Puerto Rico, and you're going to be in California. So you link up in our system. We have get notice that you're coming in. You need help. For whatever reason you're here from, maybe to go to VA hospital, get surgery, whatever. So we link up in the system. We're here to provide service to you while you're here, which is something that you can't get uh, now, currently, because you have to go through a lot just to make it happen. But we link up and we connect up. So we provide you what, here's what's available here, here's what we can do for you, here's the places that we're going to put you up to stay, here's how transportation is going to work. So those type of things. And like this lady, the caller just said, uh, they have computers, but they're not really sure how to work them. Uh, we're going to have people. Or not from, everybody's hooked up to the right. Internet. So we're going to have people from Fresno City College and Fresno State to come in and help people get linked into it. Okay, I want to take a break. We'll come back and talk a little bit more about this project. We'll also talk about the World War II Memorial, uh, the Vietnam War. Right. Hey, we'll talk about the National Anthem and whether or not you're outraged that some athletes around the country are not, uh, you know, remaining standing during the National Anthem prior to say a football game, a baseball game, whatever the case may be, even an auto race. I haven't seen that in auto racing, but I've seen it in football and baseball but uh, and basketball. But we'll come back and talk about that in just a moment. 436, Me TV Option 11. If you're a veteran, call in on this 4th of July holiday weekend. Back in a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Whirlpool appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Touch the new Whirlpool Ice Collection. It offers a modern style made to create an inspiring kitchen experience. Save big on this Whirlpool Black Ice or White Ice Kitchen. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Shake, petty off. 
240 uh, servicemen were holding that flag almost the length of the field, and Colin Kaepernick was on one knee surrounded by several teammates. I did not. All right. How many times have we seen that, um, you know, over the course of time? Of course, number seven, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, refusing to stand up during the national anthem created so much controversy over the last couple of years. Many other athletes doing the same in baseball and football. And so um, what do you think about this? Uh? Well, I look at this as as. It's wrong to do, but they call it freedom of speech. Uh, but common courtesy, if your family members have served in the military, common courtesy would be just to stand up and let's go through the motions because you're supporting the United States and the people who have fought in the war. But that's common courtesy. Uh, freedom of speech will let you, you can step back out of out, out the light or step back and then uh, demonstrate for what you don't believe in. You know, but common courtesy, if, if you're outside and this thing is happening, uh, even at this point, if you didn't really want to be there, then why not just stay in the locker room? Are you insulted? I'm insulted, but also, I, I mean, I understand, you know, uh, I understand the way it went down, but my, my thoughts of this would be, uh, even though it's your right, why not just stay in the locker room, though? Then you don't have to come out. And this don't have to be a part of it. It is so. part of freedom of speech. Right, though. freedom of speech, yeah. And so it's a very it's a very difficult topic for a lot right. of people because it, it does show freedom of speech, but also it shows disrespect for the flag. It does. Disrespect for those who fought yes. and died for the flag and for the right. country, for honor and respect, right. uh, and to defend this country. Right. So can you see both sides of the issue? I can see both sides of the issue. But still, again, uh, to be Colin Kaepernick, I mean, I... Personally, he's not the only one. Now, there no, are he's athletes. not the only one. But Let's not just the, focus the, on him because there are just, so many others. The, the other guys uh, that was involved, too, I mean, personally, I would have just stayed in the locker room. I would just said, Coach, I'll just stay in the locker room till that's but over they, with. But see, that would have defeated the purpose. They wanted to be seen. I understand that. That they are protesting, right, right. Uh, you know, the actions of, well, Colin Kaepernick was actually protesting the actions of some police departments around the nation, especially after some African Americans were shot and killed by right. police. So he was protesting the system. He was protesting to a certain extent against the government. Well, uh, true. But when you're protesting, uh, the best thing to do uh, like this is to, even though you're protesting, is to come with some evidence. So, you know, put some money on the line, get your investigators, go into the system and come out with some evidence. It's all right to protest and make a view and make a stand, but in essence that these are soldiers, the soldiers and, and sailors and Marines that fought and died have nothing to really do with that. They've already paid the heavy price. So why not give them they just dues? To you, what's the difference between Memorial Day and 4th of July? Because the 4th of July is we celebrate our independence. Right. The breakaway from the, the, you know, the mother country of, right. uh, you know, Britain, obviously. Uh, we said bye-bye to the British ways. Bye-bye to the British. Uh, but then, uh, you know, uh, Memorial Day, we celebrate uh, veterans. and right. so So we kind of celebrate the veterans aspect of this whole thing in both holidays. Right, right. Am I right about that? Well, you are right. And, and the breakaway, 4th of July, the Independence Day breakaway, uh, we had already fought. Everything had come to a conclusion. In Memorial Day... Uh, you know, we celebrate what the veterans have done and how they've done and what the wars was about and things like this. So in the two, one says that, you know, we're leaving and that's it and we're independent. And the other one says these are the guys who fought and died in the war. They give it all. They've been hurt. They've been injured. But their beliefs was to defend the rights of the United States and protect the people that is in it. Yeah, now you've been to D.C., I'm sure, yes. many times, and you've seen the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Well, I've seen it, but I, I hadn't, I've been to D.C., but it's been, oh, God, about 40-something years ago. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I used to live there, and I used to go to the, that wall all yeah. the time, right near the uh, Lincoln Memorial, and such a beautiful site. I used to just stand right. there and just mm -hmm. look at it and glare at uh, Abe Lincoln there as he was <laughs> kind of glaring <laughs> back at me. Yeah. Yeah, but I want to roll the videotape on the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and I want, I, as we look at this fabulous memorial, right. and it was, it was started, really, this idea mm -hmm. began with Bob Dole, the former senator, right. former World War II veteran, yes, uh, former senator senator, of course, right. uh, and I think he's in a wheelchair now. Yes, he's he still is. alive, but uh, thanks to him, you know, this is where our veterans here in the Central Valley, the Honor Flight, they right. go and see this memorial. Many of them walk away or are wheeled away, very emotional. They're crying. They can't believe that a memorial is actually honoring their service uh, during the war. And then they come back to a hero's welcome. Right. And so it's, it's, it's emotional, and what a beautiful beautiful area it, it, that is, it is yeah. um, but but getting back to as we look at this video and we're gonna play this thing out till the end here getting back to your educational center you know this memorial here right. honors every veteran that fought in World War two right. who will you honor at your educational center we're honoring we, we honor every veteran that ever fought World War one World War two Korea Vietnam you know, Afghanistan, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. There, there's no difference between all, none of this. We bring them all together. That's what we're there for. And in doing so, we want everybody to know. If you come in to our facility, once we get it built and there's something that's running, you come in our facility, you'll be, you'll be honored. Okay, before we jump the gun here, before we put the cart before the horse, as we look at the World War II Memorial right, again right. in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., uh, you know, this was a long time in coming. As you know, the Vietnam Memorial Wall had, had been there for years prior to this thing uh, going right. up and being erected here. Um, the, the Veterans Educational Center that you want built here in Fresno, right. it's going to take up to, what, a million dollars? Five million, two million dollars possibly. We're hoping to, to... How much money you got in the bank now? Uh, we're looking at five thousand. We've five thousand, and you have three corporations possibly in line. Right. You got Walgreens, mm -hmm. Wells Fargo, right. Transamerica. Right. Okay, and you have John Hernandez, the guy as that the ran director. for U.S. Congress, yep. that was on this program, as the director of what? He's the director of the whole program. He works with me. I'm the chairperson. He's the director. And why? Because John, uh, me, and John, when we we work together, he knows a little bit more about other other areas than I do and how to work in other areas. And yeah. uh, even though uh, we've worked together, uh, but it's our, our deal that brought his together because his father was in the service. Yeah. His folks was in the service. And uh, taking his education and my education together, I think we can just, we can pull this thing together and make it work. Got to take a break. We're going to yes. bring our other guest on, your okay. partner over here, and uh, we'll introduce him in a moment. Back with our program, 436 Me TV Option 11. It's 4th of July. And happy holiday, everybody. Back in a moment. Revan is now on KBHF channel 4.4. After God created the world, he made man and woman. Then, to keep the whole thing from collapsing, he invented humor. <laughs> Perfect reason to rejoice. A distinctly positioned channel in the crowded Hindi general entertainment channel space. It is India's only family comedy entertainment channel with a core brand promise of Asli Maza Sabke Saad Aata Hai. Which means celebrate the joy of being together. Taking humor as a universal language, the shows on Sab are light hearted 
and make up for an enjoyable family viewing experience. Indeed. Asli maza, asli maza. Sabka saada ta hai. Ab to sabko pata hai yaar. Sab TV is now on digital channel 31.8. You can find movies on Over the Air Channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. Back here on the program with Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno on this 4th of July. Joining us now along here with uh, Richard Graham is George Rios and he is with the VFW in Sanger. Welcome to the program, sir. You're a Vietnam vet, aren't you? Yes, I am, sir. All right, what year did you serve? And thanks for serving, by the way. Go ahead. Uh, I served in, uh, from 1971 to 1972 in, in, in the Vietnam era. Then I went from 1972 to 1988 uh, as an instructor for the amphibious force at Del Mar, Camp Pendleton. Okay, I want to roll the videotape here, Carrie, on the uh, Vietnam uh, combat video here. Because Vietnam was such a long war. Right. There were 58,000 servicemen who died. They lost their uh, lives during the war. Uh, you know all about it. It's North Vietnam versus South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We got involved in it. Um, where did you serve, and, and, and what, what type of combat did you see, if you don't mind me asking uh, there, George? The, the combat was very limited because I was in, with Amphibious Force. We actually uh, went into the Da Nang area, and uh, we mm -hmm. became car, guard, guard servicemen for their, uh, in that unit for about six months. And then we rotated back to our units into, uh, back into Camp Schwab, Okinawa. We floated through the Philippines, and we did a full circle. But our, our com my combat uh, experience was limited not compared to a lot of the other Marines and soldiers in the Army that actually were in. Do you feel we ever won that war? Uh, we won the war as far as our duty, as we were there to, to sustain the war. Meaning? That uh, if we would have continued and let, if they would have let us finish the job, I think we would have done it. But there was a lot of other politics coming in between uh, our governments uh, with uh, China and Russia, and, and the consequence was that it was a limited action, and we, we just did what we had to do as far as soldiers. All our right. government was working under other ideas that they had, which turned out to be the going to China, opening up Vietnam, uh, all the way down, I think, to the fall of the of the uh, wall in Germany. You know, everything had to do with, from Vietnam on forward. Why couldn't we just go in and defeat the communists there, North Vietnam? What was so difficult about that war? Was it the fact that it was being fought in a jungle? I mean, you had so many episodes during that, the course of, of time there. The most famous one, maybe, I don't know, in my mind, the one that sticks out is 1968, the Tet, Tet Offensive. Offensive. Right, right. Um, and that really, uh, you know, North Vietnam tried to break South Vietnam. It didn't happen, but, but it was at that time that the U.S. realized, hey, things are just not going our way. I think you, the, you at least our politicians our politi realized, exactly, realized it, uh, but they didn't convey that to the American public because it went on for about, what, right. three or four more years after yes, that, exactly. for God's sake. Mm -hmm. But our politicians and our military people, they were saying, right after the Tet Offensive, they're saying, wow, I, I don't know about this war. I don't think we can win it. Well, that's uh, a challenge to think about is uh, our government working inside or underneath our knowledge because... Uh, in 1972, in October, uh, before the uh, when they, have, they were having the peace accords in Geneva, right. yeah, uh, we were planning another uh, full invasion of Vietnam in, in the month of October of 1972. Wow. And, and the I, war ended a year later, though. A year later, yeah. exactly. And and I rotated in January 22nd. I was supposed to rotate in January 22nd, and that was the exact day they signed the accords. Oh. Okay, I had got my orders to return back to, to the States, and uh, 
So I say, well, I got my orders to go back to the States, right? So then I, I go to the club and I pick up the stars and stripes and I looked at the horoscope and it says best days to travel for you would be on the 27th. And it's so surprising because when I got back to my uh, barracks, they said, everybody look at your orders, they've been changed. And they were actually changed where uh, they were canceled. In other words, if the peace accord had not been signed on that day, there was going to be another party. Right. And and because this is actual, wow. I, I lived it, you know. You lived it. Yes. Mm -hmm. My yeah. orders were canceled. I want to I want to get back to the construction or, you know, the the hope of construction to the construction and the building of the Veterans Educational Centers. I was talking to Richard mm -hmm. here. Um, you've got the sponsorships, right, right. possibly from right. Walgreens. What's the right. status of that Walgreens, uh, George? Well, uh, when I talked to them, I, I presented our our uh, proposal. Flyer, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, they said they were going to have meetings in their corporate office, and they started initiation. They did contact you, right, yeah. Richard, yeah. on that? So I, I believe that uh, they're going to go forward. I also contacted Walmart, and I think uh, Walmart also said they were going to go through the corporate. Cause Wells Fargo, good. Transamerica? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we got a What's big, the status there? Uh, we haven't actually had another meeting with them, but we will be getting back. I, I think it's going to be a positive status because they already contacted Richard. Right. The, is, is, Correct me if I'm wrong, but in this day and age, to raise money, is this going to be a tough road to hoe? Uh, it's going to be a challenge because there's a lot of other uh, educational programs for, for veterans. The difference between, uh, I believe, with our service program... In other words, how is this going to stand out? How are you going to make this stand out from all the others? Well, we have a lot of guys that are not getting their, their uh, benefits and treatments because right, right. They, have a, they have a depression problem. You know, they, they come out of the service and... and I had that problem. I came for back, obvious reasons. Right. I came back from Vietnam. I, I came to Fresno. I was completely out of control. I remember going to the VA. I don't remember talking to to the psychiatrist. Right. I don't. They they had made a, uh, an appointment for me to talk to a a uh, a, uh, a counselor, uh, like yeah. so they could start helping me. Right. And a what therapist. I, a therapist. And what I did, I rejoined right. the Marine Corps and I became healthy again. Were but, you fearful when you went to Vietnam? Uh, I volunteered. Okay. Were you fearful? Were you scared? Yes, uh, I was scared, but uh, I've always believed in uh, the next man up, you know, uh, if something would happen and it's my turn, I have to do it for the team. You know. Did our government deceive us about that war, in, in your opinion? No, uh, I'm a... I'm, a, I'm an American. You're a patriot, I'm huh? a patriot. No, uh, I don't believe in. Uh, I don't believe in communism. I mean, I believe in helping people. I, I believe yeah. in social uh, services and social sure. help, but I don't yeah. believe in communism per se. I don't believe that nobody should dictate anything to anyone. To anyone. Right. I mean, uh, even though the lately the Democrats have been preaching to too many things <laughs> on people, you know. But if people want to eat hamburgers, they don't eat hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? They want to eat soda. You guys as veterans now, right, do right. you respect our president, Donald Trump? Yes, I do. Uh, do you? Yeah, well, well, you give him respect because you're a veteran and that's something that you do because yeah. he's the commander-in-chief. He's the commander But when he tweets out a video like yesterday right. of him pounding the CNN logo right. in that wrestling right. match it was it was photoshopped obviously right. from years ago when he was uh, WWE him and uh, Vince McMahon right. so so uh, when you see videos like that and when you see some of his tweets do you disrespect him no I believe we needed somebody to shake us up a little bit all you right know? I mean it's, we're like so a, you're a Trump pit. supporter then huh uh, <laughs> no I, I believe that we need to be shaken up and I mean what do we want do we want a uh, an immigration program was one of the deals there, or yeah. or, or we don't want an immigration program. He came and pushed it real quick. Come on, what do you want? What does America want? Yeah. I mean, well, well it sounds harsh, but I don't know. I mean, it sounds harsh, you know, but we need to shake it up. Yeah. We cannot be business as usual. Getting back to your, um, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, George, uh, you watched the Kaepernick uh, video that we played, disrespecting yes. the flag uh, in a lot of people's eyes. What do you think about that, not standing up during the national well, anthem? Well, that's what, uh, like I said, I, I believe in uh, true democracy. Uh, I, if I went to, to serve my country, I went to serve for him too. Uh, if he has a better idea how he can uh, correct the situations that are going on in our country, he should step up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if he's got to put some of his own money to start the program, yep. he's a millionaire. He should not just go forth and stand well, up. Well, he and, did put up a million dollars of his own money to start a fund for uh, some victims. Uh, well, I, I, but, I applaud the man. I mean, but like Richard said, we have to look at the evidence. Sometimes 
Yeah. You know, we could be biased on what we see. Right. We could be fooled. Getting back to this educational center, so what, what's the so the status of these these uh, corporations are kind of in the beginning stages. Yes. Nothing yes. is in cement. Yes. Nothing That's is right. concrete. That's right. You're being hopeful at this point. Yes, right. we are. How much money will it cost just for the startup? Just to break ground, what will that cost? How much money will you need? I, I think to start the break, the, uh, just the, for the breakdown of, of the groundbreaking. groundbreaking of the program, I think about uh, $500,000 to... And you've only got 5000 in the exactly, bank Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, you're going to have to have fundraisers, yes, we donations are. Yes, sir. from various people. Yes, sir. If people out there watching right now, they wanted to donate, they would do it how? Well, by contacting our... Uh, VetNet. VetNet. Which yeah. is, right. uh, Pull out the number there, George. Would you please give us a telephone <laughs> number? If yes, you would. sir. I'll give you a telephone number. I don't know what telephone num number you want them to call because there are, uh, I have a couple of numbers for you guys, but uh, go ahead. What number should they call if they want to donate? And say it slow, 559-721-7097. Five, five, mm -hmm. Say that again. 559-721-7097. Five, five, Okay, so that's seven two one seven zero nine seven. Yes, sir. Okay, if you want to donate, we got about and three minutes here. Go to uh, John. You can go to John or uh, hit John's email. Uh, hit John's email, and that is uh, John seventy one zero seven at Comcast dot net. Okay, and this is to build a veterans educational center near the SPCA yes. off a of high one highway one eighty here in the city of Fresno. It'll be like a modern-day center. It's going to cost at least a couple of mil, right. I, would, yes. I would tend to yes. think. And, uh, we also have, uh, see, uh, some of our veterans that, that uh, aren't able to access help from the VA, right. they, they might have, uh, let's say, gotten in trouble and, and gotten an, uh, another than desirable uh, discharge, and they're not being taken care of. We're not going to look into what might have happened in their cases. We just want them to come in so that they can also access help at least through information uh, and other services we could provide like maybe affordable housing for them uh, right. where to get meals because some of them are actually not unable to access any help at all and they're out in the streets and they're still veterans you know yeah I mean regardless and so they made a mistake you know this, but a soldier's a soldier and he doesn't go out there knowing that he's gonna be a hero but he just goes out there he either be dead or 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 come back home or or end up like a little mark hey I want how much time we got left here can About a minute and a half. I want to roll the last piece of videotape here, Richard. Okay. Uh, we're going to tour the memorial. Touring the memorial. It's only a minute can, long. Can I can I send a thank you out to these people that's already? Yeah, supporting. but I want to roll that okay. videotape before we okay. run out of, out of time yeah. here. Okay. Uh, roll that videotape because this is the um, uh, World War II memorial in D.C. As you right. see, some of our veterans here right. touring. Look how emotional that is. Do you get that emotional when you look at the uh, yes. Vietnam yes. memorial in Washington D.C.? Yes. yes. How so? Because, How about you, George? You comment too, right after Richard right. here. The, the, the people that served, the guys that gave their life. I mean, we was on the line and we did uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, where a lot of people got killed. You do uh, training exercise where people get hurt. Things happen when you when someone give their lives for their countries, and they die in your arms. It, it's very emotional because you can't bring these people back. And you really don't know what to tell their families. George, uh, thirty seconds. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I get emotional just by looking at our our memorial uh, programs that you guys present and everybody else presents. But I also get emotional just by listening to the Star Spangled Banner, you know, saying uh, Star Spangled Banner. Yes, yeah. uh, or yeah. or uh, America the Beautiful. My tears come out of my eyes. Well, look at this World War II veteran here. Um, okay, so listen. Richard Graham. Yes, sir. You come back on the program, would okay. you? Okay. Yes, you sir. I will. Back? Yes, sir. And I just want to say a quick thank Quick, you quickly to uh, Jerry Abrams' company, uh, Dr. Birnbaum, the health surgeon, and uh, Noah at the SPCA, and a few others for all that help and the uh, uh, grocery Look, outlet stores about this. Okay. here in Fresno. All right. Got to go, guys. Yes, sir. And happy Fourth of thank July. You. Happy Good fourth to see fourth you. Thanks for coming in. Yes, sir. John, we're going to work as yeah. hard as we can yes, sir. to you get this it. program going. See you tomorrow with Chris Cummings. Got to go. Happy Fourth of July. Stay safe and sane. Careful. <laughs>
start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today, 'cause the flag still stands.